for the next several weeks here in the summer, we are be going through the teaching of children's church songs. <laughs> Glory's like my favorite. <laughs> I was raised at the First Free Will Baptist Church of Decatur, Illinois. From about the time that I could stand and speak on Sunday nights, they had what was called Pastor's Pals. And what that was, was all the little kids would then come up in front of the church, and then they would sing these children's church songs. And that's what we're going to be going through. My favorite children's church song was something about the chariot going up the hill, and you can't tag along behind. I don't know if anybody else has ever sung that song before, but it's basically if somebody gets in the way, you either stop and pick them up or you run right over them. And so it was, you know, if your Sunday school teacher gets in the way, you'll stop and pick them up, stop and pick them up, stop and pick them up. If the deacon gets in the way, you know, you stop and pick them up. Because you can't tag along behind. If the devil gets in the way of you, then everybody would stomp their feet. Run right over him. Run right over him. I love that. And then, of course, they would say, when the pastor gets in the way, then we would all run right over him too. And good days. So what we're going to be doing is looking at a few different of these children's church songs, and they are being the springboard for the teaching that we kind of learn through them. And so some of this may be good for those who have been raised in church, and you know these songs very well. Others of you, this will be brand new. You'll be like, you know, what did you sing as a kid? And and we'll get the teaching of, of these messages. So, but here's the good thing. We are going to sing these songs. <laughs> and I'm going to need your help. I don't want it to be just simply awkward solo time with Tyler singing children's church songs. And so the first one is one of the most popular ones. It's called This Little Light of Mine. And so we're going to teach it just like I was taught it, so everybody has to get out their light. There we go, got your light. And I don't know why, but as a kid, we always moved it around. There's one verse we're not going to sing was, shine it over the whole wide world, and then you'd be like, Whoo uh, woohoo, we're not doing that one though. We're not singing all 23 verses, somebody wrote a lot of verses to this song. We'll just sing the first three. Everybody Ready? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. <laughs> well, well, maybe you didn't know that part. But the no's got to be really loud. Okay. Hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine, hide it under a bushel. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Good job, everybody. Good job. Now you can't wait till next week to sing again. Pastor's Pals. You all will get a piece of candy on your way up. No, I don't have candy. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 5. As we get into this teaching about shining your light, this little light of mine. 
We're going to get directly the, the passage it comes from. Matthew 5 is a Sermon on the Mount. It's in that section of the New Testament. Um, here in Matthew, writes the most significant part of that sermon. And just some really good teaching from the Beatitudes um, to another pastor's pal song about build my house on the rock. Ooh, is that one coming? What's next? You guys will, won't be able to sleep all week. And so in Matthew chapter 5, we're going to look at verses 14 through 16. Uh, sorry there are no passages on the screen today. Uh, when Jamie first got pro presenter, I learned how to do that over three years ago to run that. And somehow, since Adam's left, I forgot everything on how to operate that thing. So I have no idea how to put my message back up on here. So it's just one of those things. It's like my, my Greek from college. I completely forgot it. So I have no idea how to do that. So you'll just be, I'm um, just in the lava lamp up here today. Verse 14, Jesus speaking here in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl or under a bushel, or under a basket. No. I'm going to let it shine, right? Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds, and praise your Father in heaven. All right, so let's get into this teaching of, of light. <laughs> and yes, I did just add 15 minutes to this sermon. The board has appeared once again. No, not the board. The board makes this sermon way too long. I'm sorry that your guys' voice in my head is a little girl. <laughs> that's, that's just how it comes. Like it. Uh, all right, so here's what I need. I've been teaching all week at church camp, and so I'm tired of teaching. You guys are going to have to help me. That's what today is about you helping me teach this little light of mine. And so, here's what I need is to get a good uh, thematic idea of light and darkness. I love this word picture because of its simplicity and because of everything that we kind of, though it's unspoken, we kind of understand it when we say it, of the things that go with light and darkness. And so the Bible is very, very big on word pictures, on images. It is trying to convey spiritual concepts with what we understand in physical, uh, physical things. And so light and darkness is one of the simplest ones, yet one of the most profound. So here's what we need to do. All right. So this side over here, you will give me some words that go with light and the spiritual concept. This side over here. This is the bad side. <laughs> yeah. The dark side over here. I don't know if that's Star Wars, but that's what I was thinking in my head. Was that Star Wars? Okay. Kind of. <laughs> you guys in the middle? Ye, you will be with the good side, the light side. Sorry, Sue and Serena. You will be with the dark side. There you go. Yes. I've already split a marriage in this message. <laughs> All right. So we'll do it like within 10 seconds. We're going to see who can get the most list here rolling. All right. Ready? Light. All right. Hold on. Hold on. One at a time. One at a time. <laughs> yeah. I can't write that fast. All right, so we have joy. Dark. <laughs> the sermon of death. All right, light. Goodness. You can tell Millie's been at camp all week. She's ready to go. Dark. All right. I'll go with depression since Noah had death. All right, light. Faith. Dark. Anger. 
although there is a righteous anger, my father. Light. Hey, love. Dark. Fear. But fear of the Lord would I? No, just kidding. I'm not going to keep doing that. Light. You got all the church answers ready to go, Nate. Love Jesus. That's good. That's that's light. Dark. What'd you say back there? What, Jesse? Wickedness. Yes. <laughs> Noah's just going with the opposite. Jesus, Satan, love, hate. The light is starting to connect people's thoughts over here. All right. Darkness. <laughs> what did you say, Glory? Sinfulness? Oh, sickness. Yes. All right, light. And we'll do like three more here. Dark. What did you say, Jess? Immorality. Light, peace. Now we're getting into the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. Hatred. Last one, last one. <laughs> you really are in the, the fruits of the Spirit. <laughs> What did you say? Greed. Greed. Deception. Greed, deception. So, and you get the picture. This could just keep going on and on. Yeah. And that concludes this teaching on this little light of mine. We are now. So here we go. With the concept of light and darkness, you know, you have a, a good grasp of when that's spoken of, of all the themes that run through that. And, uh, and so what it means about the light and the darkness. And so we come back here, Matthew chapter 5. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. And then he gives us a couple of word pictures. He says, a city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Uh, one of my coolest moments of my life has been with my family in Seoul, Korea. One of the things that was just fascinating to see, we went up Namsung Tower or Seoul Tower, and it's way on up there. It's like going up, used to be called Sears Tower. I don't know what it's called anymore. Jess, or Gerald, what's the Sears Tower now called? The Willis Tower, where they had the sky deck in Chicago. But something similar to that in, in Seoul, Korea um, that you can walk around and see. And we went up there at night. And I mean, as far as you could see was lights. Just the whole, like, just amazing. Just the view of all the different buildings, just lights everywhere. And uh, Seoul is very technologically advanced. And they'd have gigantic, like, TVs on the side of, you know, towers. And you could actually see from Seoul. It was just really, really interesting, just the amount of light just flowing in the darkness there as you looked around Seoul. Uh, one of my favorite maps that people have made is that one at night from the satellite. Have you guys seen that? Where it shows the world at night and you can see you know, what big cities are just simply by the light. And so the Korea one is really interesting, Korea Peninsula, because Seoul is close to North Korea and it's just a pile of light right there. But man, once you get to the north of that, it is just dark. And it's just a really interesting, you know, contrast of the light. And, and so, you know, Jesus, you get that picture. He says, a city set up on a hill cannot be hidden. All right, the light shines in the darkness. And he, then he backs this up. And he says with another image, he says, somebody lights a lamp. And then what do they do with that lamp? They hide it under a bushel. No, nobody does that. The reason that you light a lamp in your house at night is to give light, to see. 
You put it up on a lampstand so that it lights up the whole house so that you don't step on Legos in the middle of the night, right? Or whatever they had back then. That is the whole purpose. Jesus is just making common sense illustration here. The reason that you light a lamp is to then put it on a stand to give light, to light up the darkness. All right, that this, all these themes is what we're talking about when we're saying you are the light of the world. That this stuff here is to then bring light to all this stuff here. And so what Jesus is saying here is there is a purpose, there is a reason that you are the light of the world. That just like a guy puts a lights a lamp, it is to light up the room, to reveal. And so there are so many more concepts in this and like you know, illumination and, and revelation and what it all means with God and, and you know, just security. There's, there's comfort in light. Quick question. How many of you were scared of the dark as a kid? Very honest people here. Don't tell my son this, but last night. He went with a friend yesterday and watched A Quiet Place 2. And last night, he was up at midnight, freaked out. So we kind of left the hallway light on. Because light brings comfort. Light brings you know, hope. It's, it's all these things. All this theme, when it's talking about be the light of the world, um, it's this whole flow of themes against the darkness, that there is a purpose. And that's what Jesus says. In the same way, you are then to go and light up the world, to be a light that shines so that people can see your good deeds and praise your Father. And so there is a purpose. And this brings us back to the church. What is the church? Yes, I am the church. Can anybody... For a hundred dollars, no, just kidding. I'm not giving you a hundred dollars. Could you come up here and draw the teaching that I am the church and what is the church's purpose? <laughs> Does anybody remember this? What was up here? Yes, God. And why is God up here? Because he is completely separated. This was the whole teaching on separation, right? Church is separated out. We are the called out ones. Hey, oh, you guys remember that? He was called, separated out from the shepherd, the sheep. And so this circle over here was who? The world. And then this was church. Now, this all came from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, which I'm sure you've already put into memory. Maybe not. But remember, you are a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You are God's own possession. And so you declare the praises of him. This is what we were teaching, that these people who are God's people have been separated out to truly lift up the separated one. And in that verse, it says, these people have been transformed from what kingdom to what kingdom? Been transformed from the kingdom of, of darkness. All right, right here. And been transferred into what kingdom? The kingdom of his marvelous light. So here's the thing. We, the church, have been called out of the darkness. All this stuff has now, we have been called out of to now live this stuff. And as we got into the promise, God made us a promise that if we believe in his son, we will have eternal life. And that whole promise is based on what? Anybody remember? 
What is it that connects us with God? Starts with an F, ends with a TH, has an AI in the middle. Faith, the promised faith relationship, that covenant with God, that God has promised that whoever believes in my promise, I will then have fellowship with them. They will be my children. They will be separated out to live for him. So what happens to these people over here? Does God not care about these people? Well, obviously God cares about these people because this was us, right? You don't start born here. Ephesians 5, 8. If you have your Bibles, you can look there. But in Ephesians 5, 8, what the Bible says is that you were once in darkness, right? This was all of us. And even the start of Ephesians 2 would start about you who were children of disobedience. Right? That was once who you were. There's a lot of that teaching from Paul that you used to be in the darkness, in the, the dark side. But only by the grace of God, through your faith in His promise, have you been transferred to the light. But my whole point is, you have been transferred to this light for a purpose. Not solely just for your goodness to soak it in, but what are you supposed to do now that you've been transferred to this kingdom of light? You're supposed to let it shine. You are supposed to let it shine. We are not the light source. Who's the light source? God is the source. Matter of fact, what the Bible says in 1 John 1, 5, that God is nothing but light. There is no darkness in him at all. And that's why he's the completely, he's even a different shape, completely separated up on high. He is truly the Holy One. And everything that we have here in joy and goodness and faith and love, and you can go in righteousness and purity, God is the perfect of all that. There is absolutely no darkness to anything that comes from him. He is all light and he is the source of light. And as Jesus would declare, I am the light of the world. In Ephesians 5, 8, it goes on to say that we who were once darkness have now been made light. And now we are children of light. And as the children of light, we are no longer to you know, live in this world, but we are to do things as godliness and righteousness and pursue what is pleasing to him. And this is this whole point that I'm trying to make in shining your light is that those who have the Spirit of God because of their faith have been separated out, they are now to reflect that light into the darkness. That's what we're supposed to be doing, that the light that we receive, all the joy, goodness, faith, love that comes from Jesus, the forgiveness, that forgiveness isn't supposed to just be only for us, but it's to now proceed to the darkness, to others, Everything then shines in the darkness. Why? So that the darkness sees us. Who's the darkness supposed to see? So that the darkness might see the true source of light, who is God. John, the way he writes his letter is really interesting. He just simply tells you in the very end, he says, I wrote these things about Jesus so that you might believe and by believing in him, you could have eternal life. And what John does is he basically sets it up with several witnesses. You've ever heard of the woman at the well? She's a witness. You ever heard the blind guy that Jesus healed? He's a witness. You know, feeding of the 5,000, it's all a witness to teach who Jesus is. In John's letter, the very first witness of Jesus is a guy by the name of John the Baptist, which is kind of confusing because John the Baptist is not the one who wrote the book of John. Right? That is John the Apostle, which is different than John the Baptist. But when John the Baptist came preaching about the kingdom of God, people started calling him the light. You are the Savior. You are the Anointed One. B-H-T-T-L-A-O. A hundred dollars who can ever tell me what that stands for. Just kidding. I don't have that again. Bring honor to the Lord's anointed one. Anybody remember that? And they thought, John the Baptist is the anointed one of God. And John the Baptist says, I am not the light of the world, but I'm simply here to give witness to who the light is. And that's what John began to then do. 
And John had this great following of people, and then they all started following Jesus. And people were like, what's up, John? Jesus is getting more crowd than you've got. And John was like, that's the purpose. I must decrease, he must increase. The reason that I'm living this life is to light up the world to show people who truly is the light. And that's what we're trying to get across here. That we who have been separated from the kingdom of darkness, now into the kingdom of light because of that promised faith relationship that God's Spirit now dwells with us and now light is coming from the source in order to shine in the darkness. Or as 2 Corinthians 3, 18. um, You know, Aaron, if there was somebody who taught 2 Corinthians, they would probably know what that verse means. You think that they would have that ready to go and... (laughs) <laughs> the second Corinthians 3:18 it talks about that we the unveiled ones has nothing to do with the fact that now we don't have to wear masks right that was not prophetic in second Corinthians chapter 3 it all has to do with the glory of God shining on us it's all about light it says we the unveiled ones we now reflect the glory of God and are being transformed into his likeness, into ever-increasing glory. And it's really cool what Paul is, is using the image there. He's saying that we, we are one giant reflector of the true light source, that God's light is now shining in us, and then that light begins to reflect. And how does it reflect? How does it shine? Because we become more like him. We become more like Jesus, ever increasing in his glory as we're being transformed from people who were all about depression and anger and fear and wickedness and sickness and immorality. And as we begin to be more people who are more like Jesus in joy and goodness and faith and love and forgiveness and hope, as we begin to, we've been transferred and as these things now begin to work in us, what happens is, is that we should no longer have the same shape as the world. But now we begin to, and not perfectly, so we'll kind of round it off here, but we kind of begin to look a little different. Because who are we to look like? God. And really the Son of God, Jesus. That that is how we live this life. And as we live that out, it's this whole concept of the light shining in the darkness. And so we come back here to Matthew chapter 5. Verse, that kind of sounded interesting with the microphone trying to talk through that. Verse 16, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So how do I let my light shine? By doing good deeds for other people. In Ephesians uh, 5, as you go in from 8 to 11, it would also talk about, and in a couple other places, that being the children of light, it's also abstaining from the things of darkness. You know, there in that Ephesians 5 passage, it would talk about that you are no longer filled with wine, but you're filled with spirit. And those who are filled in drunkenness just leads to more debauchery, meaning just a very simple idea of, all right, how do I let my light shine? Well, you don't get completely wasted with the people of darkness, and you know, which then brings on where there's fights and then there's sexual immorality, and, and a lot of things happen through that you know, avenue. And so you are filled with the Spirit, not you know, getting hammered kind of thing. And that's a way that by your abstaining from that, you then shine light into the darkness. And so this whole thing about light is being all this and leaving all this. It comes back to that holiness concept. How do we lift God up? By living a holy, pleasing life to Him. And how do we live holy? We leave sin and we love people. We leave and we love. And that's this whole thing that he's talking about here, that in order to let your light shine, that they may see your good deeds, your good things that you do for other people. This is letting your light shine 
before people. To hide it under a bushel or a bucket, no. That bucket has a name. If you go to Menards, you can buy it all the time. No, just kidding. It's a bucket called self. What is it that hides our light from others? It's our self. It's when we get all wrapped up solely about self, that then we're not doing good deeds for others. Then we're not loving others. And all this stuff kind of gets really dim because what's happened is we have covered up our light and it's just simply this world is solely about self. And so then we seek out pleasures and it ends up being all this darkness side instead of loving others, which ends up being all this light side. And so one of the clearest ways to keep your light from shining is to simply put on the bucket of self where everything is simply about me. But Jesus said, go and shine your light among men, meaning among people in the world. Let your light shine in the darkness, which is doing good deeds so that they may see these things and give glory to you. They may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Do we need to sing again? No. <laughs> and how do I do that? Well, first of all, in order to shine the light into the darkness that Jesus is talking about, you have to have the light source. You have to have the light source coming in you. And that's your faith in the promise of God, that in His Son you may have eternal life, and He promises then the Spirit will be in you, and all the fruits of the Spirit. Kaylee, let's get up here and go through. No, just kidding. Go through all these, all these things that are light will then begin to work with inside of you. And as they begin to work inside of you, now you're starting to renew your mind that it's not all about me. It's not all about what I want. It's about living for God, that God doesn't exist to please me, but that I exist to please Him. And as I begin to renew that mind and that mind makes choices, it impacts my hands and it impacts my tongue. It, it impacts what I do, what I say in this life for other people. And so then I start doing good things that I normally wouldn't do. When somebody does bad to me, I now return with good. All right, that's part of forgiveness. That's part of light. So why? Why in the world would you ever return good for evil? I mean, the, the smart, logical thing to do is simply, if you got hurt, you need to hurt back. That's justice. That's fairness. That's what it should be. But what Jesus would say, then there's no credit to you to being a, a son or a daughter of God. The light doesn't shine to God then. Your light shines when you return good for evil. And a similar teaching there when Jesus would teach, he said the same way about giving. Like, you give with an expectation of return. Even sinners do that. When you give with no expectation of return, then you receive credit as being a follower of God. And so it's that whole thing. Well, like, why would you ever give something that you earned and then never think to, that you're going to get that back? Like, it's only, again, fair and just. Well, your light shines when you give, not asking in return. And this is the whole thing that Jesus is saying because it declares what we've received from God. We gave God what is evil, our disobedience, our sin, our greed, our jealousy, our lust, our hatred, and God gave us His Son to die for our sins that we might be forgiven. There is no paying that back. God is never going to get from you that which you owe Him. But he has given to you freely as a gift. And now he says to those who have transferred to the light, may you now shine that light so that they might see there is hope and joy and forgiveness for them too. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And so we're just going to have just a time of prayer. 
Um, two things to pray about here. One, like, is there somebody that just kind of pops to your mind that you know, man, they could use some light? Uh, they need some, their the world is pretty dark right now, whether it's sickness, whether they're just in a bad place, made some bad choices. Man, this person could use a little light. What can I do just to be an encouragement? What can I do to just to try to shine some joy, to shine some Jesus into them? And two, may we just, again, as a church, be a light to this community. And so those are two things to pray about as we go in our prayer time here. If there is that person you think, God, please allow an opportunity for me to shine my light to so-and-so. And then secondly, for the Bridge Church to be a light in our community. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. And Lord, we... We thank you so much for the light that is within us. Lord, that just kind of goes along with those jewels of the heart, with the, the peace and contentment and the joy, the belonging, the goodness that we have because of you. And Father, may we not just simply just absorb it and just keep it within ourselves, but Lord, may we reflect that May the forgiveness that you gave to us, may we now give to others. May the grace that you've shown to us, may we now show that to others. May the love that you continually to outpour on us over and over again, may that love go to others. And Lord, may it just be a light. And Father, help us to continue to become more and more like Jesus in these areas and less and less like the world. Father, please... Give us the energy, give us the ability, give us the strength to do that so that we could ever increase in your glory, your light shining within us so that the world may see just how truly amazing you are. And Father, we say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So... We're going to go into what's called the State of the Church Address. If you need to leave, you are free to, to leave at this time. We don't have any visitors here this morning, so this wouldn't be a super awkward exchange. I was trying to figure out how to add a countdown, but again, I can't remember how to do anything to the pro presenter here. So the state of the church address, what I'm going to do here is just kind of lay out what we're going to go over concerning the Bridge Church uh, since the last six months here. Uh, so, so you can kind of follow this. We'll go pretty quickly. My kids, my teachers and kids area will be mad if it's not. History, something you need to know, partnership. Something you need to know, um, finances, something you need to know, and then decisions and how that's going to be made concerning the Bridge Church. So, September of 2018, Pastor Jamie Lee began what is now the Bridge Church. So we met at the movie theater. And just curious, by a raise of hands, for those who were there that very first Sunday, um, who was there September? So, okay. All right. So the Bridge Church was started in September 2018. 2019 celebrated the first anniversary. Then we got into 2020, and everybody knows what happened in 2020. <laughs> the darkness came. <laughs> Sickness. And so we then shut down the Bridge Church, no longer in the theater. The theater shut down. I went to online services. Um, 
We picked up in July, meeting at the English Corner for a month. As then Jamie was trying to figure out where the church to start meeting in person again. And so there was a handful of us meeting at the English Corner. Then what took place, we then, Jamie met with the realtor of Green Street, and they said this place would be an opportunity for us. So we are now in this building starting in, I think it was late August or September. We then moved here, and that's where some of you only know the Bridge Church as, as here at this location. So in the fall, again, COVID kind of resurfaced strongly, went back to November to, to online services to some degree. And then in December, uh, Pastor Jamie moved his family to Florida. And so that left the question then, what happens to the Bridge Church? Now, this brings me to partnerships. So the major partnership of the Bridge Church is what is called the Illinois Mission Board of Free Will Baptist. That is the supporting group of the Bridge Church. Uh, that is the denomination that I'm a part of, and I've been a pastor of, went to Bible college through the Free Will Baptist, and that's what this church supporting network or denomination is, Free Will Baptist. So there is a mission board that is the advisory board of the Bridge Church. So that's who hired Jamie, and that's who Jamie then said uh, to the mission board, I am going to be leaving and moving to Florida. And so the Illinois Mission Board was then making a decision to what happens to the Bridge Church. And so with my situation of working again, I also am sponsored by Free Will Baptist and what I do with international students. Since I was being here, our international students, mainly online with COVID, I was then able to say, hey, I'm here. I would like to be the interim pastor to sustain the Bridge Church until we can get somebody to come replace Jamie. Some of you remember these conversations. We had these conversations back in December. And so in January, Illinois Mission Board hired me to be the interim pastor. And that's where I've been serving. And so and all this time with the Illinois Mission Board is doing is they are looking for someone to come and replace Jamie. I am not the replacement, never have been. I'm just a fulfilling the role of sustaining to that point. And so that is what I told the mission board that I could do. I could sustain the church. I could teach the church the scriptures. I could grow us together, but I am not the person to take us to sustainability as the bridge church in this, this area. Because again, my main purpose is to love and to reach to serve international students at the University of Illinois. That's my heartbeat. So that's the situation we've been in. And so that's what we've been rolling with from January till now. Now we come to the money situation. So this building costs $2,500 a month plus utilities, which run from the low end, $400 to the high end, $900 back in February where it was way, way too cold. And so now you're looking at just for this building, and it's we pay like $32.50 a month on average, which is a half of what they want for this building. They would like to get $5,500 a month, or they just like to sell it outright for a million dollars. And so I got out my checkbook and was like, let's make it two. No, we didn't do that. All right. Now, our income as the Bridge Church through offerings and tithes and that that come from the Bridge Church is about half of that amount that we pay for this building. So anywhere from about $1,600 to $1,800 a month is what comes in from Bridge Church. So it's like, well, that doesn't add up. Like, how can you keep paying for this if, you know, you're only having half? And so that's uh, a decision that's going to be getting made here later in the year. Um, so let me explain that. Jamie, before he came to Champaign, 
he went to free will Baptist churches in Illinois, in Arizona, in Arkansas, in Tennessee, to then ask these churches and the people within these churches if they would support his work of starting this church in Champaign. And so there are people who supported Jamie. It goes to an account with the Illinois Mission Board, and then he was paid out of that. Now, there are some funds that are still there. And so that is why we're able to continue to pay for this location, even though we as the church are bringing half of what just this cost. That's with no other expenses. Um, and so we're about 500 to 1,000 on top of that of what we spend out each month, which is really, really, really low. We're, we're about as bare bones as we can get uh, as a church. And so that's what's taking place on the financial level with the Bridge Church and what's, you know, how, that's, how we're able to stay here and not you know, go bad on our ability to pay rent. Now here starts to come one of the kickers of the Bridge Church is my situation. And that is I too, like Jamie, uh, go out to Free Will Baptist churches before I came to Champaign, went to Ohio, OH, and uh, North Carolina, Florida, Alabama, Tennessee, Illinois, Missouri did the same thing. I would go to churches and say, hey, you know, there's people from all around the world who have no idea who Jesus is. And they come here and they just need a friend. They just want some help with English, American culture. Our family would love this. And for those who are like interested in faith, I would love to come alongside and be like, hey, this is what this means. And so that's what our family does. That's the niche we play in the kingdom of God. And so we went out and did the same thing, Jamie. That's how I get paid. Only my account is not with the Illinois Mission Board, but it's with IM, a National Agency of Free Will Baptists in Nashville, Tennessee. Normally, which has not been normal for a long time, normally, I am out raising about twenty-four to thirty thousand dollars a year for our ministry, and that is usually two Sundays a month. I am gone at least to do this to then go to other Free Will Baptist churches and raise those those funds. And COVID, uh, nobody was having church, so it's hard to be like, anybody here? I don't know. I'm sorry, my mind goes a little crazy sometimes. And so COVID didn't happen. So this year was in the year to really go out. But I got hired by the Illinois Mission Board to be with you guys. <laughs> You're like, the Illinois Mission Board, man, they don't know what they're doing. This guy is ridiculous. He has us sing children's songs and everything. At least your voice wasn't a little girl's voice in my head that time. Anyways. So, as you can imagine, my account is definitely not on the rise or steady. My account is taking a significant hit now that we're six months into this year after 12 months of last year. And so that is a, the Illinois Mission Board sees that as a, an issue for me, which is obviously an issue um, in my ability to hold up my part with my bosses at IM in Nashville, who allow that money to flow to me in our ministry. So this leads us to the decisions. Here's the decisions that the Illinois Mission Board, they are the advisory board of us. This is Adam and I, we meet with them once a month. We are very transparent about what we feel is happening here. Um, mostly positive, mostly good. Um, there's one of you that we just talk really bad about every time. No, just kidding. And, uh, and so we're like, you know, man, we just need somebody to come and to, to take on Jamie's role and to, to move us forward. And so here's the situation. The Illinois Mission Board, is one of them will be coming in either July or August to help explain this to. Here is the decision that they have decided. So it's all dependent on a church planter or pastor to be what they would call in the pipeline meaning there's somebody that we think is really serious about coming here, and that would be in the pipeline, 
or if there is absolutely nobody and it's just simply crickets and they have no clue of when the next person would come, everything is dependent on that. And so July is our national convention of free will Baptist. There'll be about five to 7,000 people meet in Memphis, which is a really good city for eating. And this is our huge networking event. This is where all the pastors will be talking about um, what's going on, who's going where, like I'm looking for a church, I know a guy, all that kind of thing. Adam and I, last week, we made a Bridge Church profile. And so there's a video of us, the community, that we are going to put on social blast to our Free Will Baptist networks and get that out before the national convention about our need here at the Bridge Church for a church planner and all in the hope of that guy to come in to fill Jamie's role. So what's the decision, Tyler? Well, what the Illinois Mission Board has made very clear is that if come September 1st, there is absolutely nobody that they know of that is looking to come here, then they will release me of the role of interim pastor. And so basically I will be fired for a back of a letter term come September 1st. Uh, and that is without any understanding of when my role would possibly start to come to an end here, without no kind of end date in sight, then my account going way down, I have to go back out again to Freel Baptist churches to then raise money on Sundays, which is how I do things, that 24 to 30 grand a year. And then come fall, the campus is back in person, English Corner, this Thursday's in person for the first time in a long time, and some good stuff's going to flow from, for international students. And so that's what I'm being released to. If there is somebody in the pipeline, so we go to this national convention, they talk to you know, three or four guys like, I'm really interested in coming up and seeing what Champagne's about. And so just you know, heads up, there may be a family come in the next you know, month or two months or three months, whatever, who is looking to be the, the pastor. So I will let you know so you can put on your best performance. No, just kidding. If there is somebody, then the Illinois Mission Board has some funds and it will supplement uh, my account for, to continue and it will supplement what it's cost for this building. And so there will be supplementation that will keep us just rolling along for if somebody is coming because now we can see that there is an end to this site. There is somebody. He'll go raise funds like Jamie and I did. I'll continue interim pastor while he's raising funds. Then he'll come as the, the, the pastor of the Bridge Church. I'll then be released that way uh, back to international students full time and out raising funds for myself. And so that's the decision. It's all on, is there a church planner in the pipeline or is there no church planner in the pipeline? Um, you know, again, I see everything in images. It's like the doctors talking to the patient. You know, we have a surgery set for September, major surgery, amputation of a leg. We are giving you medicine. If the medicine works, then we will not do the surgery. You'll just keep on rolling. If the medicine doesn't work, then we're going to have to do a, a, an amputation and surgery. For us, you know, if somebody comes in the pipeline, we'll just keep on rolling as is. But if nobody comes in the pipeline, then there will be some changes come in September. And that's, I think, about the most transparent, clear way I can deliver you what's going on. Um, so what happens, I guess would be this question, what happens if nobody's in the pipeline come September, Tyler, to the Bridge Church? And so those are some things that are still unknown about, is there a venue change to take place with, with the building? Would there be a, a change of, of times of service and how to, to manipulate uh, you know, the times when the Bridge Church would, would meet in a different location, all those things? are still up in the air on how they will be decided upon 
come then. So Adam and I will be meeting June 21st with the mission board. If there are questions that you would like to ask the mission board, the decision makers over the Bridge Church, if there's something you're thinking, I would like them to either know this or like to ask them this question, then you can email me or text me uh, your questions, and I will say to the element, hey, these are some questions from the Bridge Church that they have for you. And then they would be able to address those. And so by next Sunday, if you could get me those questions, I could take it to these group of people who are the advisory board over this work. And so that is the situation. That is the status of where we've been since Jamie left. Um, We've been trying to keep things just running as normal as possible and in the hopes that somebody would just fill right in and we just keep moving. But six months in, and then if we get to nine months in and we don't see that there's just anybody just to come right in behind Jamie, then some, some things are going to have to be decided upon. <laughs> now, let's shine your light. All right. So I'm not going to take any questions right now from the floor. I'm just going to deliver this information. You can start thinking about it. If you have questions and like to have a conversation about this, then, yeah, call me, text me, email me. And, you know, if you want to do it over the phone, if you want to do it in person, just, yeah, we'll set up a time to meet in the next couple weeks, and I can gladly, you know, tell you the same thing. This is what it is. This is... And so we'll be looking at that. So I think the best thing to do is really just to have a time to pray for sure. Um, that God would have his will be done. And that there, there is that person who is just not aware of this opportunity. And that's what we're trying to do with the national convention, with the video profile is that there's just some people out there who are just not aware that this is who God would really like to, to match with us, then may that happen, and that may His will be done with our church. So let's just pray. Father, we come to You today. And Lord, it is, it is just good to be together with believers on the first day of the week, just to be reminded of Death has been conquered. You know, death, where is your sting? You have, you have no power because of Jesus, his sacrifice for my sins and his new life, resurrection that gives me new life. And, and Lord, it's just so good to come together and worship with a group of believers that you really just enjoy being with and that who just love the Lord. And Father, I just pray that you would be in direction of our church, that and God, we just pray for all these decisions that are going to be rolling out in the next few months. And Lord, we do pray for the church planner, the pastor, Father, that you would bring them alongside. And God, may you even you know, begin in this moment making a way for that to take place. We just trust you. We give everything to you. May we live in that trust. Your will be done. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.